Hello and welcome back. This is Jonathan Gardner. We're covering Sergey Lang's basic mathematics. In this lecture, this is section 13.3, graphs of functions. And by graph of a function, we mean the set of all points x, comma, f of x, or uh, the image of x through f, right? So we have some function that maps points, maps, I'm sorry, maps uh, numbers to other numbers, and this is how we draw a graph. So uh, an example, this hopefully isn't too new for you. So as an example, let's say f of x is uh, the mapping such that the result is going to be x squared. The graph of f is just the parabola. So we've seen this before. We've studied this back in chapter 7. Um, and it's not very complicated to graph that. So if you wanted to think about it one way, you can think about it analytically as the graph of y equals x squared. You can think about it as the graph of all points x, x comma x squared, right? Another example, let's use a different color. Let's use this lime green. And this example, he has a little story that goes along with it. So we have a, uh, the force is according to the position on the x axis, axis. And the force has the, what does it say? The square, the square, the purport, inversely proportional to the square of the distance from the origin. So the force is F, dependent on the position X, is some constant K divided by X squared. That's what inversely proportional to means. If it's proportional, then that means the X would be up squared uh, on the upstairs. But in this case, it's inversely proportional, so the X is downstairs. And it's inversely proportional to the square of the distance from the origin, so it's K over X squared. <clears throat> Suppose we had K is equal to 3. So then the formula for the graph would be Y equals 3 over X squared, right? And we can draw an equation of this graph. We haven't seen this, I think, with the analytical geometry, but it's pretty easy to figure out what this should be. So we're going to have x, and then we're going to have f of x over here. So when x is 1, then we're just going to have f of x is 3 divided by 1, which is 3. When x is 2, this is going to be 3 over 4. When x is 3, it's going to have 3 ninths, or 1 third. When x is 4, you're going to have 3 over 16 and so on. And if we were to take x smaller, so let's say we take x of 1 half, then that would be 3 times 4, 12. And 1 quarter would be, let's see, four, 16, 3 times 16 would be 48. Okay. And so if we were to sketch such a graph, then at position 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, whatever, at position 1, it would be up there. At 2, it would quickly drop into 3 quarters. 3 would be 3 ninths or 1 third, and then 4 would be 3 sixteenths. So it gets very small very quick. And then 1 half is going to be 12, it's going to be somewhere up here, and then it's going, to, it's going to shoot up, and it's going to drop down very quickly like that. That's what the graph is going to look like. Okay. As another example, let's use this blue color. So if we had the graph of sine of x, well, we already know what that looks like. So sine starts at 0. It goes up when it's pi over 2, it goes up to 1, and when it's at pi, it goes back to 0, and when it's at 3 pi over 2, that's going to be negative 1. So it's going to go yoink, and down, and then up again, and it's, it's, a, it's an odd function, so it does that. You're opposite on the other side. Okay, uh, another example. How many can we fit on one piece of paper? Let's find out. Let's use this orangey color we have the graph of this function. Let's use, a new, let's use a new piece of paper for this. Okay, there's, this is actually pretty interesting because we've seen this graph before, just not in this form. If I could grab a piece of paper. There we go. So we have the function, we have the formula y is equal to x minus 1 times x minus 2. Okay? So with, this has two zeros, right? Two roots. One root is at 1, and the other root is at 2. Okay, remember the roots is where this function is equal to 0. So on this side, you can clearly see that it's going to be when, when x is 1, and when x is 2, then the function is indeed 0. Okay, 
So we can go ahead over here on this side of the paper and we can kind of sketch out where the zeros are. So we're going to have uh, one, there's a zero there, and there's a zero there. Okay. The next question we're going to have is, is it positive or negative in these different areas? Right? So below x equals 1, so x minus 1 would be negative. x minus 2 would be negative. So we're going to have a negative times a negative, so it's going to be positive. So in this region here, let's go ahead and just draw a dotted line here. This region, it's going to be positive. Okay. And when x is greater than 2, when x is greater than 2, this is going to be positive. That's going to be positive. So this is also positive. But between x is 1 and x is 2, one of them is going to be positive, one of them is going to be negative. This one's going to be positive, and this one's going to be negative. So we have a negative times a positive, so it's going to be negative there. Okay. And that kind of starts to give us a little picture of what's going on. We could also plug in what happens when x equals 0. So at x equals 0, we have minus 1 times minus 2. So that's going to give us the value up here. So it's going to intersect there. Okay. And indeed, we have kind of a graph that you should recognize as a parabola. If you don't recognize it, let's actually multiply this out. So we're going to get x squared, and then we have a minus 1x and a minus 2x. So we have minus 3x's all together, and then finally we're going to have plus 2. Okay. And if we were to complete the square, then we would have, let's see, x, and we're going to have minus 3 halves, and then we have to add or we subtract 9 fourths, and we have that plus 2 that's left over. This is squared. Okay, so we're going to get x minus 3 halves squared, okay, plus, this is, let's see, 9 fourths this is 8 fourths, so minus 1 quarter. Okay, and if you recall, this will show you the offset, so we're going to have the center at 3 halves. Okay, which is 1.5, exactly where we expect it between 1 and 2. And it's going to be offset by negative a quarter. So it's going to go down to negative 1 quarter. And it's just a regular parabola, ones that we've already seen before. So in this form, when we write it this way, this uh, allows us to think of this in terms of the analytic geometry that we've done. Okay, and one final function that he wants us to consider, I'm going to use this peach color. He's going to use this. So he's going to say if we have x then this is the largest integer that is less than or equal to x, okay? So if we had the, the function f of x is equal to this operation, okay? Then, for instance, we'd have f of 2 would be 2, but f of 3 halves would be 1 because the largest integer that's less than or equal to 3 halves is 1. And so what you get when you graph this is kind of a stair-step function. So it goes from 0 to 1, and then it goes from 1 to 2, and then it goes from 2 to 3, and it looks like a stair-step. And since it's less than or equal to, it's going to start right there. This is where it starts. At this point, it's 1. At, at the coordinate 1, it's not to 0, it's 1. I'm going to put a little circle there to kind of remind you of that. And so that's the stair step function we have. The exercises here are not very difficult. There's a lot of them. Um, my recommendation is to take them somewhat independently. Don't expect that because you know the answer to one, you know the answer to the other. Uh, problems one and two, uh, if you notice, one's just the inverse of the other. Problem three uh, should be rather easy to graph. Problem number four, you'll note that the x, if you substitute x prime is equal to x plus 2, right, then you'll have the same graph as number 3, right? So this is basically shifting the graph a particular direction, and so on and so forth. The ones that are interesting, absolute values, pay attention to signs. Uh, one way to think of the absolute value functions is to consider two functions, right? So you consider that f of x is equal to x when x is greater than 0, and f of x is equal to minus x when x is less than 0, okay? And this is the same as f of x is equal to the absolute value of x. So consider substituting these functions in when you're in those domains for that thing, okay? And then finally, we have the stair-step function for the last uh, six problems, 25 through 30 which should be fairly interesting and fun to play with. That's all there is for this section. Um, I'll catch you guys next time. Take care and bye-bye.
Thank you for watching this video on Sergey Lang's Basic Mathematics. You can find the series on the left, and on the right, you can click to support my channel. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.